and we're live good late evening everyone hope everyone's doing all right tonight welcome to bigfoot odyssey this is the late show i'm your host carrie with me as always field producer for bigfoot odyssey he's the field director for 168 hours my trusty sidekick on the late show the late show i can't even talk bradley hatcher how you doing man i'm doing well i'm doing well i'm all i'm all fancy with this new equipment that i i feel awkward because i'm uh, high tech uh uh that's that's really nice that you got some some uh some good stuff there cornell's yeah. kind of being loud there for us but you know we can <laughs> we're, we're gonna mute him for a second <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing <laughs> we can't hear you we can't hear you cornell we got you muted right now you were there was a ton of noise going on there um our guests, I've been kind of really uh, excited for this show because we don't have a ton of researchers, not that I've had, you know, I don't want to say anything legit. We just don't have a lot of researchers that I respect for the late show. We usually say researchers for researchers report, but uh, these two guys have had a lot of personal experiences and we're going to talk about some of those. Uh, from Discover Sasquatch, you can find him on YouTube at Discover Sasquatch. Chris Reinhardt, he is coming Hello. to us from Connecticut. Uh, also, Hello, everybody ha has a podcast and Cornell Hanratty. He has. You can find him on YouTube at <laughs> No Such Thing Podcast. You're unmuted. You're unmuted now. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. Okay. I'm oh. good. Out of the gate. Thank you, Head Carter. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I've got some stuff I want to show you guys. Uh, it's a trailer. A video is going to be coming out really soon from Christopher Noel. Uh, you can find Chris Noel at Impossible Visits on YouTube. Um, I'll put a link in the description after the show. But uh, I want to show you guys this. It is. Oh. It's cool. When I went to Florida, Mark Zasky did something to my mouse it's an eye it, it, it's wireless it's an iMac and all I gotta do is just touch it and everything gets big or small and I'm gonna have to get him to fix that so let me let me get where I can get this together because I want you guys to see this uh the name of the documentary is called how to see Bigfoot how to see Sasquatch one of those anyway um I don't want you guys to see. So setting the entry at eight inches. Let me rewind it. Can everybody see that? Yes. Sir. yes. Make it full screen. Yeah. So setting the apple tree at eight inches, we can rough out a size estimate across this way. She's about 2.4 feet. And down from head to foot, just shy of four feet. Oh, wait, never Keep mind. In mind that I wasn't supposed to show that. I put the wrong dang one up there. <clears throat> I almost messed up. You almost pulled to me. Yeah, I know, right? That's exactly. Not, that's not the right one. That's just part of it. Chris that's, is sitting there. He's probably sitting there yelling right now. No. <laughs> yeah, y'all. You guys that's didn't the get ultimate see. tease. That's the ultimate yeah, tease. I, right? It is. You guys didn't get to see good stuff, so that's okay. Let me find the actual. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Chris sent me that exact clip about 10 minutes ago. Oh, and he's like, don't show that to anybody. That's that's going to be. <laughs> and I'm so sorry. I'm glad I didn't let it go anymore. Golly, I had to think for a second. And it is cool. It is cool. You guys are going to really, really enjoy this. So, okay. Here's what I want you guys to see. Oh, come on. Okay. I'm not Daniela. Okay. She produces the show. So I'm going to let that, it's going to take it for a second to render. All right. <laughs> so sorry, Christopher. He's cussing me. We push another tree down. You hear? Wow. 
know. Oh. I, I can see you. Hello? Oh, wow. That is cool. I'll say Sasquatch. Some of the best, I mean, mm -hmm. put this on your calendar, October the, October the 8th, right? October the 11th at 11th, eight. Yeah. You guys just saw that. Um, you almost showed you. <laughs> if you want to see the rest of what I showed you the first time, make sure you put that. Go to Impossible Visits and uh, subscribe, and you'll get the notification when that comes out. Um, I'm excited to see it. It's a... Uh, uh, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to jinx. I'm trying not to jinx myself. I, I've been sitting here all day. The, the thing I sent you, Brad. Yeah. Took all day. Just that. Wow. That's how long it's taken to do this. And I know you guys are tired of hearing about me editing 168 hours. But I just want to say, I'm hoping that I will be uploading it Monday. It's almost there. I just got a few more things. I, I finished a few narrations. And it'll be uploaded. The first episode will be uploaded Monday. It's just that slow. Just doing credits took me all day. That's how long it's taken just to render. Um, I'll sit here. I got my piano. I go for a little while, sit, play for a little while, and come back. So I'm working on it. And I'm going to work on it all day tomorrow and Sunday. So, All right. Well, let's get into this show right here. Um Chris, I know you were telling me some stuff. I know you and Cornell had gone out just recently, right? Right. Yes. Last Saturday, uh, Cornell drove down and uh, he wanted to come check out one of our areas we call Rock Throw Alley. And uh, he drove actually two and a half hours to meet up with us and uh, take the hike. Uh, he saw our video that we put out the week before. I think it was step by step where we uh, we're, we're using an RF meter. Uh, we're applying that in our research right now. And uh for some reason, when something, when whatever is approaching us, that RF meter starts to climb. And uh, last Saturday, when Cornell came to visit, it all started with rock tosses. And as it progressed, we got to the top of the mountain. And then the rock, the rock uh, tosses just started, you know, coming more often. And then that RF meter just topped out over. It couldn't register anymore. It was just like Florida when I went down to Florida, the same exact, same exact thing. So, uh, are they going hand in hand? We don't know, but uh, Cornell witnessed it all. And uh, I just wanted to say something about Cornell. Cornell is 100% behind all this, uh, the Sasquatch research. And, you know, he's into the cryptids and looking for uh, looking for answers. And uh, it was a pleasure to have Cornell come down in our area. And, uh, and he got to experience uh, something that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I want to hear all about it. Um, will you will you explain a little bit what an RF meter is and what you're picking up for okay. those that don't know? Okay, a, a RF meter is radio frequency. It's a part of the tri-field uh, meters. You can uh, pick up, uh, uh, what's the other two I can't think off the top of my head. But uh, we're getting measurements of a microwave oven with the door open hitting us in the middle of the woods. That's the hot, that's the readings we're getting. I mean, this 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 RF meter is topping out. It can't get any higher. And we we actually wrote a letter to the company that makes the meter, and asked them how high we were measurements we're getting, and all they did was come back and told us that it doesn't go any higher. And that's it. Any ideas as to why? I have. We have no idea. That's Theory. why we're trying. We're looking for answers. Testing. Testing, testing. We're getting baseline readings with our phones. We're getting baseline readings when we're um, with a. Uh, I got a 5G phone, so we're running it without Wi Fi. We're running it without Bluetooth. We're trying to get baseline readings for everything, but it seems every time these guys get close or whatever it is gets close, I mean, this RF meter starts to climb and it starts to go crazy. And it's all documented. We have, I have everything that I just talked about on tape. It's all going to come out. We had two recorders going that day. We had three cameras going that day. And I had a 360 camera going that day. And actually, Shana, she's a new member of our team, actually had a sighting 
at the top of the hill of one that ran between two trees. So, wow. um, yeah, so we're going to sit down next week with the 360 camera and we're going to go through it all because it's a, the 360 camera is an unbelievable tool. You can go, it's unbelievable. The, the, the one RX two, I believe is called the 360, the Insta 360 one X two. It's amazing. You can go the foot, you can go three. It's like I said, 360 5.7 K any direction you edit and you can watch it for the whole time. Wow. That's yeah. going to, that's going to be heavy, heavy to edit now. Yes. Yes. Oh, my stupid dog. He's not stupid, but he's barking right now. I got scared <laughs> earlier and he's been nothing but bark. Um, now if, if this can be attributed to Sasquatch, I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but there's only two choices here to me. It's either them doing it or it's some three letter agency. I mean, I like to keep my dog in my yard. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if they're using something to to do that to control i mean we're kind of getting that something like that down in uh of course we haven't used our a radio meter we used a uh emf right emf meter. is another yeah that's the word i was looking for sorry and got big spikes 300 milligauss just yep. for a couple seconds and then <clears throat> and then gone and if they're if that's somehow being used to control these things keep them inside some kind of fence so to speak i mean like i said not a big conspiracy guy but i mean you kind of gotta go there right you know, or it could else? be it could be like a tracking device you're right the government tracks them maybe and that's what they're admitting that's the true. rf radio frequency so they can pick them up you know it's endless yeah like again gotta keep the dog in the yard but uh yeah that this this meter was screaming for 10 minutes cornell was right there he's witnessed the whole thing it was just topped out screaming um, but, uh, we experienced halfway up the mountain. We're sitting there. We took a little break and a rock throw came in and landed behind us. And, uh, we continued to the top of the mountain and I went, actually went Facebook live because there's a fire pit at the top of the hill and there's all a bunch of little broken branches all around the fire pit that nobody ever uses. So I take my phone, I'm going Facebook live. I'm talking to my group on the phone and I bend down into the, the into the fire pit and all of a sudden a rock comes from the bottom of the hill and hits the fire pit. We're all Facebook Live for this whole thing. Everything that goes on is Facebook Live. So that'll be all in the video, too. It was a, it was a pretty uh, intense moment. <laughs> and there was four of us up there. So, Cornell, how do, you, how do you recall all this stuff going down? Well, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, first off, I'll say that Chris is, um, has got his shit together. Sorry has got his stuff together. $20. Um, yeah, that's I've a $20 one. More debt. I've, I've, never seen any, I've never seen anybody more dedicated. He has so much equipment and so much dedication. I was kind of blown away. Like, I'm walking up the mountain with a, a GoPro on a bottle of water and a vape. You know, that that's my research. <laughs> but Chris has got like $7,000 worth of equipment to him. Um, and he has like you know, the, the RF meter on his front and they've got like audio recorders and, um, they've got, they've got, he's got three people. So they've got like cameras and audio recorders, 360 cameras and stuff. And I'm like, wow. I mean, you're dedicated, you know, you're, you're not messing around. So I was very impressed by that. And, um, the first rock throw, it came in from, I don't know, Chris, it came in from the, the top of the mountain. It seemed to come down the ways. And if, if I wasn't, it, it's so subtle. If I wasn't uh, in the Bigfoot, I would just like totally not even notice that. But then we looked down and there wasn't any acorns anywhere. I mean, I looked around the whole area. There was no acorns. And this thing came through the trees. And then we got up to the spot that Chris is talking about, um, where he went Facebook Live, and everything just, I can't explain it. Everything just seemed to pick up, and 
we could, we, we could hear like snaps, you know, wood snaps, and then Chris got that thing thrown at him beside the the fire pit, and then um, Shana, I think it is, um, saw the the black figure. I seen none of this. I, I mean, I didn't actually witness any of this. I, I heard the the rock throw, but I was there for the the RF meter, and it just all of a sudden went crazy. I mean, it just spiked. And before it was knocking, I mean, it was like maybe 100 to 160. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, Chris. But then all of a sudden, it just like went up to, um, was it like a 1,000 or 17,000 yeah. or something? I can't remember. But everything picked up, and it just seemed like, it seemed like, I don't want to say it because I don't want to sound like a cook, but it seemed like we were in Bigfoot's backyard or something. Like we were in some area that, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It seemed like we were in the middle of something and it was making its presence known. And and I'm not, I'm not a woo guy, you know. When I saw Chris's last video down in Florida, that kind of blew me away. And that's why I wanted to go down here with them because I've never been a woo person, but when I saw some of the stuff and, and if any of you guys haven't seen it yet, Chris, you can explain what video that is. That left me speechless. The stuff that he experienced there. And then this was, was another example of that, you know, that I couldn't explain. I don't know much about RF meters, but what he, what he experienced down in Florida, with um, the trail to Bigfoot was pretty insane. Um, so I experienced that again on the top of the mountain. Now we did have a, a tree structure up there. I don't know. It, it could have been made by a human. We were way off the trail. The fire pit did have like fresh sticks sitting on the side of it, you know, that had been purposefully set there, but there was nothing in the fire pit that had been burned. So it was kind of strange, but there was definitely some kind of activity on top of that mine. I don't know how to explain it. It sounds like somebody just flipped a switch mm -hmm. and then bam. It's, it felt like it. Yeah, that's what happened. When that rock hit the fire pit, that was the start, and it didn't end for a good 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, that went crazy. And it just kept on. They, they yeah. I think there was three of them there because we were getting rock throws at, in front of us. To uh, you'd hear Cornell go, my three o'clock, my three o'clock, and then Shane would say something's over here and back of me. So they did their triangle pattern, as they, you know they normally do. What well, well, I've normally experienced. So again, this is all in my opinion. This is I can't say this is fact. You know it happens everywhere. Just this is what happened here, and we had the same exact stuff happen. Cornell was halfway up the mountain and his phone turned on to Bigfoot. Uh, what was it? Sawdust Beast on YouTube. Just out of the blue, his phone um, just turned on. I think so. I tell you, Mark is smart like that. I think yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> getting advertising. But yeah, that's exactly. the same thing. That's the same thing that happened in Florida. That, that, the phone started going crazy, and then we got to the top. We sat down to eat lunch, and as soon as I bent over at that fire pit, in comes the rock, and that was the switch. Like Bradley just said, that was the switch that started it all. And then they were around us. They were snapping, and one would snap, the other one would run on the other side. I got audio. We got like four rocks, and you can hear them flying through the trees. But they're coming from each side of the of the place where we were at. And uh, and Shane has seen a figure Let run between the bark, trees. Chris. Yeah, the dog barking. There was a dog barking. There's no dogs up there. It was. It was. It was. It was pretty no, intense. It wasn't. It was intense. My arms were, my arms were, the hair on my arms was sticking up the whole time. Just electrically charged. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but. Uh, I got that video. Yeah. We uh, and, and the ravens were going crazy. Yeah. The birds were all flying over us. The ravens were flying. Cross squawk. What set it off was, well, we knew when something was coming, the, there was a squirrel up there and he was going nuts. You know, the uh, warning, it, you know, the yeah, warning. Yeah, doing the stranger danger. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it was going it for like five, six minutes, and then it stopped. And then I bent over that fire pit, and that's when it all went down. 
So uh, yeah, you, you hear those squirrels until they throw a rock and knock it out of the tree, and you just yeah. hear, <laughs> yeah, it quits. But they were they were following us. Um, it happens at this area. I've been going to this area for six years, and uh, this is the area that we uh, had the. Um, that remember the last show I was on, I told you about the dog whimper when we were being drawn into the woods. And then uh, we turned around and got back out onto the main trail and we had a rock thrown at us. And that's how it got its name, Rock Throw Alley. But uh, they're up here in New England. Something's in, in the woods up here in New England. I mean, obviously, we just saw what Christopher is showing. And uh, I just had a conversation yeah. with him. That the, every t Everything that I start experiencing here, I, I, I that solvent theory that he came up with, it's just, it makes so much sense. It's just, it, it makes so much sense. It's just, yeah, it's unbelievable. absolutely. That, that does seem to be the normal behavior form. And here's something else that's interesting. And I, I asserted this to, to Christopher also. How much do you think that activity is attributed to you being there? Do you think that if anybody else would have been out there, any of these things would have been happening? I, in, in my opinion, no. No. I think you're marked. I think they choose who they want to interact with and you, they come after you. They know you. Yeah. It's just plain and simple. Christopher's been in the, his area for what? 12, 13 years. Right. Through there. I mean, has had a lot of direct interaction. You know, a lot of interaction that, that researchers get is not in real time. You know, it's something gets left behind you know, for each other, they leave something, something else gets left. Right. But Christopher's had it. Some of the, some of the best, you know, direct interaction that you're going to see is, is on impossible visits from him. Yep. Mark and Melody's asking, it took him six years to, to really get consistent. You know, they would get things now and then, but the way they're getting things now, he showed me one today. My goodness, just blows me away how anyone can look at this and just not be convinced that this is what's going on, that this is, this is what is out there. But same way with me, I was around them seven years. That's why I think because it was me, if anybody else would have done what I did that day, nothing would have ever happened, but because it was me and what I was doing and, and being around them and interacting though, I didn't know it. So, so I just, <sighs> I would say this to anybody, any researcher that goes to the same place all the time or that goes out is go to the same place all the time. If you're, you know, that, you know, it's a viable area, let them get used to you and then stabilize would be the next thing. Mm -hmm. It's the next obvious thing to do <clears throat> that I would I say. I agree a hundred percent. Carrie, um, the place that I go to and um, the reservoir beside me, I show, remember I showed that footprint. It looked like a human footprint, but it was in an odd place. One of the guys that I'm camping with that fishes down there took a photograph of another bear footprint in the same area off the trail. And he put a $5 note beside it. And it was definitely 12, 14 inches long. And it was definitely a bear footprint. And that's yeah, right you, beside me. And 12 inches is big. I'll put that's, it up on my windy tab. That's 12 inches is huge. You know, that's a size 15 yeah. or 16 shoe for a, a regular, you know, human being. And, and this is, uh, uh, do people frequent that? I mean, you didn't find any other tracks, just that one. Well, the one I found was just one, but it was right in the middle of a, it was off the trail, kind of in a swampy area, like a cranberry patch. And the one he found was kind of in a similar situation, and it looked very similar. See, I, I think I they do put it, it up in my community tab. I just think they do it on it's purpose. Weird. I think they do it on purpose. Leave one track just to see if you're paying attention. One track. It, yeah, if you're noticing them. Yes. That if you stop and you look at it, we lost Brad again, that if you stop and look at it, then they'll know that that the game is up. Then, well, usually it's a game on <laughs> after that. Right, right. It? That's hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. You're hundred percent hitting it right on the nose. That's what happens. It's those little things. If they notice that you, that's what I told Cornell. I said you got to go to their area, look for stuff that's out of place, and notice it. 
and make sure they see you noticing it and uh give it time i mean did these guys us. creatures of habit did it to us in florida the only place that you could get a track we found one and cast it was it 14 and a half inches mm -hmm. it was huge human shaped footprint it was in sugar sand and the way they cast it was really cool. They sprayed it with hairspray, I like a lot of hairspray, and got it dry and hard, put a cast in it, came out great. Uh, I'm, gl I'm gonna, glad I brought hairspray uh, for that gonna drill. The, <laughs> it's going to be in the film. Hold on. Yep, so there's the That's little one. <laughs> yeah, well, Linda's gone to take Hunter, so he's in there by himself and barking at <laughs> everything. So now he's right up under me. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> here, stay right here. Okay. Got his 15 seconds. <clears throat> well, yeah, so uh, it's definitely, it definitely progresses over time. I mean, like I, like Chris, you said, Christopher's been doing 15 years at his area. I've been at these areas for six. I brought three people in there that they had no clue who they were, never been there before, and they came right in on us. I mean, they're, 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 I just think you build a relationship with them. It's a trust issue, a trust with them. And, uh, it's, and I think that RF meter is huge. I think it's huge. I think if, if we can figure out what's going on with this RF, we'll be able to track them. Well, Hey, look, yeah, no doubt. Or at least know when they're, when they're around. Yes. Yes. A warning awareness. Well, plus Chris has a, a special whistle too. I was impressed by that. Yeah, I always we always whistle. use the Every same time I whistle. Go there, and it's the same whistle. That way they know who you are. That know they know I'm coming. Do you want to do it? I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. But I'll so, tell you something strange you that happened. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so it's not like a, a whistle it, whistle. It's a whistle that you're doing. Yeah, I I, okay. I use the same whistle in all my the areas pattern, so yeah, they know uh, who it is. Yeah, so they yeah, so they can identify you. Yeah. Um, right. It's an ID. What the hell was it? You I don't can't remember it now, Chris. <laughs> don't give it don't give away his, don't give away his whistle, man. Yeah. Let's keep yeah. the whistle to ourselves. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, right. somebody from that area goes out there and they start whistling back at him, you know. Right. There are there are trolls they don't know out where there. We are, though. Well, right. Fair enough. So I had, I had someone contact me via phone and she told me that I need to start talking to these things. I don't know why, or I just feel weird about doing it. So I took my team members out for the first time and we went in, I said, I'm going to try this. It might be a little weird. I'm going to ask him for a knock. We'll see what happens. I asked for the knock 30 seconds later. What happens? Knock on the tree. No that lie. Is, I had two witnesses. Oh, that's so cool. Then we, so then we bring Cornell out and them two again. I asked for the knock. Nothing happens. Halfway up the mountain, I go, all right, you guys got to do something better than the knock this week. And uh, I don't know if one and one equals two, but uh, all that stuff happened. And, uh, so, and this dimension, it does. Uh, well, it's it crazier as you go down the line, I guess. Well, Christopher Noel talks to him and gets the same thing. I yeah, mean, he does. Responses, yeah. the knocking, ask him to push down trees. What happens? Five seconds later, a tree comes down. I mean, that's that's awesome. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> no. To sit out in the middle of the woods, he was asleep under a tree, and a tree falls down right beside him. So he sits up, turns his camera on, and asks him to do it again. And they did it again. So two. Yep. Not just one, two. And then what was another time he was out? If you watch uh, my two years in the ravine. Yeah, this is Jester, Brian. <clears throat> it's just J-E-S-T-E-R, Jester. Um, he's, it's called, a video is called My Two Years in the Ravine. And he's, they're throwing, this one is throwing green pine cones. Yeah, I remember. From 100 feet away. Yeah, that was fantastic. He, yeah. Behind a screen of trees. And there, he, and he points his camera up so you can actually see where it's coming down. Yep. From so it's this, but they're landing in the same spot. <clears throat> Asks him to hit him in the head. Of course, he's wearing a toboggan, and what the very next one hits him in the head. 
I mean, from a hundred feet away, a lob shot. Right. I mean, and, my, and intelligence incredible. showing intelligence. Sure. But do you think they understood him or because he pointed to his head? That I couldn't say, but it's showing, I don't know. It's showing yeah, some they sort made it of intelligence. Happen. What do you guys do? Did you make any kind of gesture or you just say the word? Can I get a I, knock? I just asked him for a knock and we got the knock. It was, I couldn't believe it. I stood, I said, froze in my track. I'm like, did you guys just hear that? They're, they're like, yeah. I'm like, do you really hear it? They're like, yes, we heard it. I'm not crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then we got to the top of the mountain that day, and they do you ever hear the mouth pops? You know, like. I mean, I can do it. Right, but they do that at the top of the mountain on this spot. And I said, hey, we're going down in the spot. I said, you guys got to listen now, because down in this area, they do these mouth pops. Sure as hell is when, when we went down in that, that area, they started doing the mouth pops. It's in my video step by step. Uh, we caught it right on film. I put it on the thing, and we're catching we're catching EVPs, I believe, what they are, but we caught Indian drum chanting music at the top of this mountain. And it's in mm. the video if you put on headphones. And then uh, we're catching voices, just like in Florida. Um, voices you can a, understand? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like in, in English? Florida, yes. Oh, that's yep. creepy. Yeah. Creepy cool, though. Yeah. The guy, Mike, uh, Mike is a new member of my team. He actually had a hello in his ear the day we went out with Cornell. What kind of like, microphone are you using, Chris? Are, they, are you I, picking it up on more than one device or just? Yes, uh, yes. I mean, we're picking one. it up on my camera and we're <clears> picking up. I use a Zoom H2, H21 recorders. Yeah. And I strap them right to my backpack. They're on my shoulder. And Those then everybody good. on the team has one. And then we have GoPros. And like Cornell says, we have cameras all over the place. Zoom has a broad range especially those those omnidirectional microphones yeah. i used the same type of mic just like this uh, a rode ntg3 is what we used when we went to nebraska and i never caught it anywhere else i've never captured it anywhere else but there in that moment was that voice and it's about five seconds long it's 15 syllables or so but it is in a native american dialect and when i when barry heard it there were some words in there that were Omaha, but he said, man, they're stuff we haven't used in 60 years. Yeah. He said, oh, that's cool. he had to go to his dictionary to look at. It was because what they were doing, they were making the Scott Carpenter hair trap, putting bacon grease mm -hmm. on there, except they weren't using bacon grease. They were using lard, which I guess, you know, six and one half dozen, the other, whatever works. And then the backwards tape, the clear tape around the right. tree. So they come yep. up and they get the hair follicles, right? So we're in there and I'm filming around and they're 30 feet away over there. Linda's right behind me walking in and I, I didn't hear anything at the time. But you clearly hear this, what I think it's saying, what it sounds like to me is Nava Gata Gabi Sheo Iho. Pretty long. Uh well, gata is lanolin or grease. Sheo means to shed hair. So they knew <laughs> whatever that was, knew what was going on mm -hmm. there. I mean, when, when, if you watch it, you can tell it's it's not Barry's only one that speaks Native American. And then you actually hear him talk a few seconds later. So, you know, it's not him. And it sounds like it's in a can 50 yards away. It's just, it's, the, it's the, one of the clearest EVPs I've ever heard, much less captured myself and completely on accident. But there was something about that place that just did not feel right. I didn't feel good in there. Linda felt it too. It was almost like you're about to be shocked at any moment. Dread. Like a dreadful feeling for sure. But like an energy. Yeah. And we felt it in two different places. Bad juju. There. Yeah, it wasn't good for sure. For yeah, sure, you can good. you can feel that, man. You can feel the bad juju. For well, sure. We found we found the five 16 inch tracks all in line, forty two inches between them, heel to toe. It came down the bank, took five steps, and went back up. And you could kind of see toes. They had been reined in a little bit, but they were sixteen inches long. You know, that's that's. Not, that's not somebody in boots. No, they're, they're the dogs. But 
that that place when we stopped there to get those and linda was actually going to walk across the street and go do what she normally does which is run off and, mm -hmm. and you know scare me to death but she got to the other side of the road and stopped and then she was looking at some pretty flowers she said and then just turned around and came back and we talked about it on the way out this place just doesn't feel right mm -hmm. we heard a yell as soon as we pulled up there as soon as we got out Rah! You know, it's all in that film. Crazy stuff. Well, what do you think it uh, is? What do you, what do you think? You, th I think, you think it yeah, is? Absolutely. I think, look, if they can do infrasound, then they can they can modulate in that infrasound, in those tones that we can't pick up. They're speaking you know? mind speak, you're thinking. Well, I just think they're speaking in a tone that we can't hear, that's out of our range, but not out of theirs. Right. Radio they frequency. Know, that they know it's out of our range. Right. So they are talking to each other. You know, it, it, it kind of makes sense to me that we got that and they were saying that. Like one was telling one, hey, they're up there making a hair trap, you know. Right. right not right. fooling these things. You're yeah. just not, you're just not fooling them. I think they watch us too much. I told the story about Mark going to the same place four days in a row trying to catch him. And then he goes there the fifth day and there's a peanut butter lid sitting on the stump mm -hmm. where he was sitting because they would go down and throw the the jars. So you're not fooling them. <laughs> They just no. know what you're doing. They're watching you when you come in. It's the way it seems. You know, right. I'm not trying to assert that this is exactly what's going on, you know, saying they can see you from a quarter mile away in the dark. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they can. Maybe they can. But well, that's what we're finding. That's what we're finding <laughs> out, Carrie, is that, that these guys are one step ahead of us every time. Every time they know where we're going, they know where we're coming, they know when we're coming. Down in Florida, when we were going across this stream down there, we got a voice in a southern draw that says, Hey, look, it's Chris. And he's talking about Chris Connor. He hasn't been in there. And then I got a message on my phone of four digits. It was C M B B. 60 lines on my phone. So we erased it all, except for the last 12, and then we filmed it. We got back to the house that night. I look at my phone again. The message is back, but now it's in capital letters. And we couldn't figure out what it meant. So we called Chris's wife over and she goes, I know exactly what that is. Mark, Betty, Beata, and Chris. B-M-M-C over it was a and text. over on my phone. Yes, a text sent. when we were From that, where? From when we were in that area. Chris asked for a knock in that area. We went across the brook. Look at my hair is standing straight up right now. We yeah, went across the brook out. and we seen that at we seen this after it said, Hey, look, it's Creus in the southern draw. He gets there, he goes, This is the place I can ask for knocks and get him. So he does it. He gets the knock. Then his phone starts going crazy. He goes, What about your phone? I said, Oh, it hasn't done nothing. So I looked down at my phone and there are 60 lines of the four initials. And we couldn't figure it out. We were, I, if you watch the veil on my channel, watch the, the podcast. We did a live podcast after I came back and it all shows, it shows everything. And then, uh, but you couldn't tell like where it came from, like who sent it. We didn't, we were right in the middle of the swamp. Yeah. But I mean, you got you oh, it. Was, text, no, it was me minute. typing. It was me typing. It was me typing the words. Yeah, it was, sent so from him. It was oh. a message me sending to somebody else. So it was like a butt dial. We thought. But then when we got back to the house, it came back in capital. And it was just impossible to do it in your pocket. Dot, 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 dash, spaces, M, capital M, little Bs, BBBs. It's just impossible to do in your pocket. And yeah, with any consistency. And, the, and to have it be their the initials of their first four names is just mind-blowing. <laughs> See, this mind -blowing. is this is the these are the things that just make me not even want to try. Yeah, that's scary. And this, that's what happened at the top of that mountain. Exactly the same thing. The rock throws and that RF meter started to go. That's what happened in the swamp. The RF meter was going bunkers. The same exact scenario happened in the two different places, thousand miles apart. Son of a bitch. It's, a, it's pretty intense. <laughs> I'm shaking right now. I'm really literally shaking on my chair. Sorry, kids. Brad owes 20 bucks to the swear jar. I think he thought he couldn't be heard. <laughs> 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 this stuff went out uh thank you john keep on keeping on y'all the truth will set us free these entities are not cognitively limit limited primate no way no how you know uh, 
I, I would agree that they're on the spot. That they're probably it's timing a, me out. I don't know why. Yeah, well, we heard you swear, by the way. You, you oh, you did? Yeah, well, 20, 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> nice n- nice to know that it works when I can. It does work. It does work. I'm so, really uh, digging this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, John. What I think is there are, there's more than one entity. I'm not, I don't, I just don't think that it's ubiquitous that we could say, yes, th- these are, these are creatures that have this ability. So they all have it. I think there are others out there that, that just don't, they're just there, you know, maybe <clears throat> there's hierarchies in everything. There's hierarchies in nature and maybe it's just some, some creature, maybe it's a different type of creature. I don't know, but I think you're right about there being something out there with this, with those abilities. Absolutely. But I also think that there's, there are others out there that are just natural creatures that are just a part of the woods. They stay away from people. It's just there that, that don't have this, these abilities. And I, I like down at some places down in Florida, I think this is what Mark and Melanie's asked. You've been catching down there for the last six years. Um, They've been throwing apples, same place. Every time they go to a place, they just start throwing apples. And after a week or so, they start showing up. When they show up, they're already there and they're filming them. They're seeing them and filming them. Now, the one that he showed me today, you see this thing lean its head back. You can see right up its nose. You see the first shot, he's looking straight out and then he just leans his head back and you see the nostrils and up his nose and it's just crazy. So I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if these, these have abilities because you'd think if something like that has that ability, <clears throat> then they have to, they have to know why you're there. They have to at least have a really good idea of what your intentions are. So I think those, I think those matter too. what your intentions are. Oh yeah, for sure. And if they know that, then they know what you're going to do with a picture of them. Right. So they're not going to show themselves. All right. I would love I would love to learn how to how to how to get these guys on film. I mean, I'm not at that point yet, but I'm getting close, I believe. Um I found 39 inch stride at Larry's, my other area. Uh 13 inch footprint with a 39 inch stride two weeks ago in the mud. Um they're there too. It's just I've been there for six years too. And I think it's the same, I think it's the same, it's the same ones, I to tell you the truth. Do do they um, mess with you there like they oh, do up I, on the hill? I've been gifting there for six years. I've been trading with them. I've gotten stones. Uh, I got a stone right here that uh, they left me. Right here. This was left at a tree that we visit all the time. Same same routine hike, same everything all the Is time. Is that quartz? Quartz. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I got, we got, Larry has one of the stones and I got another stone over there and, uh, We've gotten feather. I mean, we've been trading peanut butter and apples with them for six years. And at first they were ripping the, the peanut butter jar in half. They would twist it and it would be just in half. So I held up the peanut butter jar one day and I showed them how to take the cap off. After that, never found another peanut butter jar to this day. We can't, we don't know where they're bringing them. They're not nowhere to be found anywhere. And, uh, I got that all on my channel too. If anybody ever wants to see it. everything I talk about is on my channel. You can hear the rock throws. You can take, you can check out all the gifting. It's all there for anybody who wants to see it. Um, I love this stuff. I'll do it to the day I die. I'm not going to stop. I mean, I'm addicted so hard right now. It's <laughs> I'm glad I have a good, uh, uh, good support. Maria is awesome. She lets me do whatever I want, you know, and, uh, that well, helps me. Yeah, it does help. And I'll tell you what I like, what I respect about what you do is, and there's only a handful. I mean, I I can literally count on one hand, the researchers that, (laughs) that are transparent first and just honest, just telling you, not asserting things and putting things forward as facts, because, you know, we say this here and we believe it firmly people with influence saying these things when it comes to making broad claims and giving advice and things like that. When you have influence being wrong means being harmful. If you're wrong, you could hurt somebody. Right. 
And you don't do those things. You don't claim to know a bunch of stuff you can't possibly know. What you get is what you got. I, I think if more researchers would just do that, just show us what you're getting and what you think and put it forward as that, you know, now I've been out here and there's three females and four males and right, their, right. their kids are named John, Billy and Blake. And, you know, these things that people look at and because people are not stupid, don't watch this stuff. They know that right. you that you can't know that. And I just think that if more people would do it the way you do it, the way and just a few others do it it would go further. A lot more people would take it more seriously and we would actually move forward and get more people into the subject because I think that's what it's going to take. Convincing more people that these creatures are actually out there, get them paying attention, then they can have their own experience and you don't have to convince them of anything. They'll just be convinced already. So these are, these are my assertions, but nothing wrong with being honest, period. Right. right. Yeah, that's all you got. I mean, I'm not making millions of dollars here. And I well, thank you, by the way. I really appreciate that coming from you. I mean, uh, yeah. that means a lot to me and Bradley, too. He knows that. And Cornell, everybody that yeah. I'm involved with, uh, that means a lot. Honesty is, is all you got. That's your word is your word. That's all and you all got. I, all right. All I can do is IMO. This is what's happened. You can see everything I'm talking about on my channel. And, uh, I'd like to raise awareness. And these guys are not 50 miles into the Sierra mountains. These guys are right. everywhere. They're Absolutely. everywhere, everywhere. The state forests were made for a reason. They were I made for you, a reason. You do have cool stuff on your channel, Chris. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I encourage everybody to watch it. Exactly. Well, thank you. Yeah. If you're interested in actual research and learning something, then that's, Chris's channel uh, among uh, just like I said, just among a few others that I would recommend uh, go into to actually get some information that because you're going to decide for yourself anyway. You don't need someone else telling you what's what. Just tell us what you have. I'll decide for myself if it's, right. you know, if it's legit or not. But when you get someone trying to push it too hard, telling you this is what they do, this is what they don't do, how anybody would know what they don't do. Is way be, I mean, I can assume they don't fly. We'll we'll we'll, we'll Gosh, go with let's hope not. We'll go with the stuff I know, right? With, with the stuff that's self evident. Yeah, could you imagine what the car windshield would look like? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bad enough. Yeah, that, for the birds. yeah that, that would be a fun sight. Yeah, the wipers wouldn't take care of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no doubt. To my look, to my experience, and and from what I, the way I feel about any of this is if someone's trying to push something on me, I'm backing up. Right. And that's the way most people are. But if you just put it out there, give what you think. Sure. This is what I'm, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm going through. And if someone gives you another idea, be respectful to them. You know, don't call them an idiot. You know, you know, there are several researchers out there that'll call you stupid because you don't get it. Well, right. we don't have the context you guys do. You're out there, you know, whatever you're telling us is, is and showing us is all we're getting. That's inside that frame and you being there experiencing it, what you're saying uh, matters. But if you're well, trying to push something forward, people back up every well, time. And, and, and your actions speak louder than words. And, and yeah. if, if it's there, we'll understand it and people will get it. And, you know, it's all about, about the actions. Yeah, I followed. I I learned from everybody else that I follow. I mean, I follow Rick with Booger Farm. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. Angie Snow White Bigfoot. She's awesome. Yes. Christopher Noel, awesome. I mean, that's how I'm learning. These guys all have pieces to the puzzle. You use everything that they're doing. Watch what they're doing. Watch what they're showing you, because they're just doing the same thing like you said that I'm doing is just sharing what they're experiencing and documenting it and showing you what they got. And if you That's learn it. from it and you put that all together, you can, you can, if you want to experience them, you can. Yeah. And can actually extrapolate something from it. You know, you're not taking advice from someone that's telling you uh, something that, you know, they can't possibly know. And, you know, some of these things, like I said, are dangerous, but everything you, every person you just named is on that list for me, for sure. No one documents better than Snow White Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. I don't care who it is. 
uh, in, in her diaries. And she that those prints that she just got on her car are just mm, out of this world. Or I know, right? Out of this that. world. Out of this world. And Christopher, I mean, when you follow, we started watching him in the first time. That guy's carrying four hundred feet of cable. I know, right? In the middle <laughs> of the woods, burying it under the ground, trying to catch these guys. And I mean, it's brilliant. He, he's trying to do what he did, but now look at where he's at. You don't even have to do that anymore. I mean, you saw the hand in that that. Well, you just showed us the hand goes like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, he got to that point, but he tried it one. though. He what's what's neat is he had a theory. He tried it. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. Right. Yeah, and that's it. It's learning from others that have come before you and and the mistakes they made. You know, it, anyone doing this now, especially just getting into it, needs to realize and respect that you're standing on the shoulders of giants. The people that I did that did it before, don't spit down at them. I'm not. I'm not really big on doing that anyway. But you know, you had a, a lot, especially the big four or five to start with. You know, Dehenden and right. John Green and Bender Nagel, Bender Nagel, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, you know, those guys. Um, I don't think any of them ever saw one. I think Bender Noggle actually had got to have an experience later on in life. I think he had one with Todd standing, I think up in, uh, when he brought him on his That's show right. there, I think so. Yeah. That's he right. was a brilliant, brilliant man, brilliant man. And believed yeah. 100% on everything he talked about. I mean, 100%. He didn't care what ridicule he got. He just stood behind what he believed and, uh, showed everybody what he believed and what he thought. So, yeah. Well, if it's true, if it's true, that's what you have to do. It's right. what you truly believe. It's what you should do. I mean, I, I understand that there are a lot of people with careers uh, in jeopardy, but that's just because of the, the scientific community, as it were, because the way I see it, what's going to happen when this creature is finally validated? I mean, you're talking about the last 200 years, things we've been taught. It's going to erase a lot of that, and you're going to have to rewrite a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm not talking that that's taking, that's keeping religion and everything else out of it. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Why they wouldn't, they just don't want to touch it because of that. It's getting close. It, that there's going to be a breakthrough here, but I mean, would you guys with the 168 and Christopher and Angie and uh, I mean, everybody, everybody I just mentioned, it's just, it's getting close. Somebody's going to get something that's going to be end game. I think it's getting here. I think I, I think we'll see again, it. Um, Chris, it might be some, uh, it might be some person on a trail somewhere, not looking for Bigfoot, that gets a money shot. Right, right. That could also happen. Thank you, Eric Williams. We love you too. You know Thanks for I mean? watching. A clear <clears throat> yes. Oh, look, we got a, a new member, Shattered Solitude. Welcome to the Bigfoot Odyssey family. There was another member that joined earlier. If you'd like to be a member of Bigfoot Odyssey. Uh, right down there beside the subscribe button, there's a join button. It's $2.99 a month, uh, and we appreciate you you all very much for, for joining. We have members-only shows, and those that do join, whatever order you joined in, I'm sending out T-shirts. So it's going to be a while <laughs> before you guys get one because i got to order some more. Uh, you guys actually bought Brad uh, a setup this month. So, thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you, the members, for that, Brad. Thank you, members. Now, now, if I can just keep it going and not timing out every ten or fifteen minutes, but I know it's got to be something that I'm doing. So, well, we have we're not missing you, so we're, uh, well, we're still we're seeing well, you. I, yeah, you got my you got my money in the swear jar when I didn't know it. So, <laughs> you sound good That's though. I right. set up. It's nice. It sounds good. It does yes. sound good. You, you sound fantastic. You sound oh. fantastic. Yeah, no, you do sound a lot. It just yeah. did it again. <laughs> we still, we still hear and see you. Oh well, poor guy. He's gonna have to figure all that out. Yeah, that was. Uh, you get paid from YouTube once a month, and uh, a lot of people were talking about Brad's audio, and it's like, yeah, well, we're gonna get. Hey, yeah, we were just saying you do sound great. Brad, it, it sounds incredible. Thank you. I feel like I need to start singing this thing. This is uh, 
So if, I'll play, I'm, I'm I'll, fancy. If you sing, I'll play. Oh Lord! All right. <laughs> well, I actually yeah, yeah, I don't like, want to hear me sing. Yeah, I'd like to hear it. I, I actually went. Play. Jimmy uh, Barr brought me to tears the other night on my show Did for he? the first time. Oh yeah, I'm like everybody's crying for the first time. I discovered Sasquatch. Talking <laughs> about kids and grandkids, and uh, uh, he got to the point where uh, he was at Tennessee, and he got out of the car and couldn't go up the mountain, and you know that breaking point for him and yeah. i started tearing up and then we talked about the kids and it was a uh, first thing so you guys do the piano and the singing would be a first thing for a uh, bigfoot odyssey tonight right no i've played before no i mean bradley's singing oh Brad, yeah, yeah brad's playing. singing now yeah I, I got a feeling this thing might just happen to go out again uh if that's gonna start happening <laughs> on purpose yeah <laughs> exactly i'll blame it on bailey there you go well, we're, com- we're coming up on the end of the show. Uh, Cornell, do you have anything before we rock on out of here? No, not really. Um, I'm just a guy that interviews people and listens to the story. I'm not, I'm not a researcher. I hang out with people like Chris and Dave Wilbanks, and I'm just looking. I'm just trying to find out what the hell is going on. Anything so coming up? Anything my- that we can be looking forward to when your show uh, happens? Any of that? Well, you're probably the next person that um, is coming up. Um, Dave and I have a Dave Wilbanks from Bigfoot and More, and I have a a new collaboration show under the umbrella of both of our shows called um, Into the Void because we're both Black Sabbath fans. Oh, um, love it! We plan to we we plan to um, interview people like yourself and. Um, what does I always forget his name? A Canadian fellow that smokes a pipe. I always forget his name. Steenberg. We got him coming up, and we've we've got um, Alexander Petikoff. So we're, hometown we're monsters. To, he he's doing great stuff yeah. there. Hometown monsters. Yeah, he he's a good guy. He's up, he's right up here in New Hampshire. So we have um, we want to just interview researchers and I want Dave's input as well because he's very knowledgeable. He's been doing this for a long, long time. I love his, I love his uh, approach to it. He's taught me a lot of stuff, you know, so he and I have decided to um, come together and, and do our own like a uh, interview podcast together. So that's that'll great, be coming man. Up, I think next Sunday is you're our first guest. Oh, I, I'm the first guest. Yes. That's awesome. There you go. I love David Wilbanks. Me yeah, and Brad got to meet him. Yeah, we, we met him down at or up at Mark's place. Yeah, he was there for that. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Dave's, Dave's golden. He's a great guy. I got he is a, a nice of, guy. A ton of his interview that I that I didn't put in the you know I just put the relevant stuff in there, but there was some other stuff that I don't know. I was I won't say anything else about it. I was I was being I was being a little. I was being a little, uh, I don't know, selfish, I think, in a way. I, I won't say any more, but he responded. And I just, once I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is not going to look good if I put this out there. So, uh, yeah, we won't, we won't do it. But he, uh, he, it was a great interview with him. Just a great guy, very serious, more than 20 years, yeah. you know, doing it, especially around Oklahoma, but has been all over. So, yeah, David Wilbanks, Bigfoot and more. Another channel for you guys to go check out. He reads stories. Um, you know, he goes people, camping. I yeah. saw Cornell. I saw you on one of his episodes when you came down and went camping with he and his son. Yeah, and and that was what that was the last camping trip that we had something walk around our tent. But Dave goes down there by himself and sleeps outside. And I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you come down here by yourself and just, you know, I'd be terrified to be honest. Oh, I would. I would, same here. I'd, I'd have a big gun with me. Oops, can't say that either. But you can say gun. Well, you no. just can't. You just can't put the letters A and dash 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 R together. You two well, picks up on that or suppressor. Yeah. yeah. He's he's um training in these situations. I guess he's had like some pretty hairy situations in law enforcement. So I think he's just naturally brave or he's been he's trained to be brave but me the these things terrify me i don't care if they're they're not dangerous or not 
it's just the unknown and the uh, if they do exist, the size and the, the unknown factor and the speed and the stealth, it all kind of creeps me out. So when mm-hmm. I was going down there with Dave, I'm like, we're driving and driving and driving into the heart of the um, Kaimichi Mountains. And I'm like, Dave, I can't believe you go down here by yourself. It's like, it's crazy, you know, but it doesn't bother him, you know. Yeah, it so doesn't. told me a lot. Yeah, look, there was a uh, there's a, a famous quote. I can't remember who said it, but it was. And this is just how I feel about people that look for Bigfoot. Uh, <laughs> naivety can be endearing in an adult, but when it's accompanied by vanity, it's indistinguishable from stupidity. So I put that on, not, not, not you guys researching. These are the outside the handful of researchers uh, that I'm talking about. So yeah, I think it, I think it fits uh, quite well. Yeah, for sure. But all right. Well, Chris, what you got coming up? Uh, I actually, uh, I'm building a website right now. It's going to be discover Sasquatch.com. Um, going to have sightings and i'm going to put uh the podcast on there and set up a little store i i, I want to get a new thermal and uh, i made 19 dollars on youtube last month so that ain't going to do it for me so i'm going to put a little store and sell t-shirts and uh going to get that going and um i'm just going to keep nice. on doing what, what we're doing we're going to travel this coming year we want to get to georgia we want to get out uh to the west coast and uh we want to keep on testing this rf stuff because uh yeah we're, oh, we're, I'm, I'm behind the rf meter thing it's it, you something. shouldn't be getting those readings in the middle of the forest or the swamp and and uh, no you shouldn't uh, yeah uh, hopefully more people will start doing that and then maybe that's a thing uh, uh, like you said a good way to you know if that's the case and it, right, it does right. seem to be that to know if they're close if they're right. close by, if they're around, that you're getting that. But I mean, how awesome would that be? Yeah, that's the only time it goes off, Kerry. I show it every in all my videos. I show it all the time on my shoulder what it, what readings we get. And that time when we got the mouth house, we stopped, and you can hear the footsteps coming in, and all of a sudden that meter starts to climb. And then they stopped, they turned around and went away from us, and then the meter dies. And then at the oh, top of that crazy, mountain, cool. as as soon as that rock came in. And they came around us, that meter, we, as soon as we turned it on, was topped off for 10 minutes. It didn't stop. Wow. And we could point it in the direction to where they, the snaps and the pops were coming from, and it would go off. And you'd toy it the other way, and it would go down. So that is awesome. Whatever That's it awesome. is, I can't say what it is because I didn't see it. But whatever it is, it did it in Florida, and now it's done in Connecticut. We're actually testing it in Georgia right now, and we are testing it in Ohio soon. So... That's awesome, man. All updated. That yeah. is cool. Please do. Or if you want to, if you want to uh, go and, and see the updates yourself, you can go to Discover Sasquatch on YouTube. Also, go to No Such Thing on YouTube. Um, I get to be the first guest week from Sunday. I did not know that I was the first. That's going to be uh, quite an honor for me. Yep. That is going to be an honor. I'll try to bring it. Cornell, it, Cornell's way too modest. He is. He he's he's top notch in the woods. He, he's not afraid. Like he says, he's, he was more curious of them guys, I think, than they were him on Saturday. Uh, he was going right into the woods and trying to see what was going on, you, you know, but these guys are so fast and so elusive. I mean, they'll, they'll make that sound in back. You. You're looking in back, you know, what's going on and where you were just looking, they're moving. You know what I mean? It's all military right. tactics. They're it's just, but Cornell's way too modest. He can hold himself in the woods and I just wanted to get that out there before the end of the show. But I get it. I get it. And he's being, he's just being honest because I do understand this. See, for me, in my mind, I feel more fearful than when I get out there. Once I get out there, everything's okay. Right. But it's it's the beforehand. You know, it's in your head that... The pre-anxiety. Sure. Something about it. That's yeah. that's right. I, that's yeah. what I would call it, pre-anxiety. But once you get there, you know, you're there. You might as well do what you went there for, right? Right, but right. I appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, make sure you check out those. Uh, we'll have links in the description. So thanks. Uh, good show, Brad. Thanks, Cornell, Chris, for showing up. We'll see you guys for Sunday Encounters. Uh, Wade Bell is going to be with guys. us.
Yeah, thank you for having us. It was appreciated. Absolutely. Brad, good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for the, the goodies. Yes, sir. Thank, thank the members. They did that. Thank you, members. All right. I'm a member. Nice. I'm a member. I'm a member. You're there welcome. You go. You <laughs> thank you, Chris. <laughs> I was going to wear the shirt you gave me, but I got this one uh, got from Cliff Brackman. So I figured I would. I wore it the other night. Though. Oh, so but, sure. I'm not, I'm not up in close. Well, I didn't want to wear the same shirt twice, <laughs> two, two shows in a row. So I, wore, not, I, I had it, it on the all, other night. So it's all good, man. It's, it's all still good. dirty too. So, Hey, thanks everybody. <laughs> See you later. Good night. Y'all take care.